Today, NVIDIA is already releasing their next generation, a new NVIDIA GPU. AMD just launched two new processors that tell us the future of gaming, and NVIDIA has a response to AMD's new GPUs. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. This video is sponsored by Micro Center. Okay. It's news time and first up for today, NVIDIA is apparently ahead of schedule with their next generation GPUs. Now, the wild part here is that the company had already announced that they were now on an annual cadence, meaning they would be releasing new GPUs every 12 months. But according to this, that's now been moved up even more. You can see here it says, this schedule appears to have been halved, meaning that 12 month cadence, it says, as the difference in schedule between Blackwell Ultra and Rubin is now estimated to be just six months. A new report now states that Rubin GPUs and Vera CPUs are expected to hit sampling as soon as September with a tape out already initiated. And honestly, this seriously is impressive. I have no idea how in the world Nvidia is able to pump out new architectures this quickly, especially given how terrible the RTX 50 series is. I mean, if they can do all of this, why? But that aside, like I said, this truly is impressive. And if you don't remember what all Vera Rubin is about, let's kind of quickly go over that. You can see right here, well, first up, it is based on TSMC's new uh, three nanometer node. But then not only that, it also comes with HBM4 and not a little bit of HBM4, but we're talking 288 gigabytes of it. Not only that, but Rubin is set to be one of the first real kind of chiplet based GPU designs from Nvidia. And at least according to this, it's set to get 50 petaflops of FP4 compute in terms of performance. Not only that, but we are also talking about their next generation Vera CPU, which comes with a whopping 88 custom ARM cores, which means 176 threads. Obviously this does have hyper threading, 1.8 terabyte per second in V-Link. I mean, like I said, this really is impressive. So what the heck happened to the RTX 50 series? Well, everyone, I told you it was coming. Micro Center's Santa Clara store is officially open. So if you're in the area, you've got to check them out. Micro Center is the only place left where you can go in person to get all your parts for a PC build, meaning you can actually see what you're buying in person. And I don't I don't mean one random motherboard off in the corner somewhere, I'm talking aisles of parts. From motherboards to PC cases, memory to even parts for a custom water cooling loop. They seriously have it all. And they have it for a great price, like their new June laptop savings event, where you can find awesome laptop deals all month long. Like this 15.6 inch Dell Inspiron for $250 off, bringing it to just 549 bucks. They've got tons more deals like this, but that's to be expected. It's one of the reasons why I went to Micro Center for my first ever PC build. Plus to actually have the parts that day was obviously an awesome advantage. Either way, check out their new deals as well as their new store down in the description below. Now, speaking of the RTX 50 series, if you saw my last video, you know that I went over a potential GPU that has been leaked to come out, the RTX 5050. In that video, I kind of went over some of the specs that had been leaked. We're talking a massive reduction in core count versus the RTX 5060 down to just 2,560 cores. Then it's on a 128-bit bus and comes with a TDP of 130 watts. But in that video, I mentioned that while we were sort of looking at 8 gigabytes of GDDR6, there had been some rumors claiming that NVIDIA was rethinking this and they were set to move to GDDR7. Well, unfortunately, a According to Benchlife, that does not look to be the case. As you can see right here, it says after the report came out, NVIDIA's AIC partners received updated information. In this update to AIC partners, it was confirmed that the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 5050 will maintain the GDDR6 memory configuration. 
Of course, it isn't necessarily the memory speed that we've really been too concerned about lately, but it's mostly just because the memory speed is able to, for the most part, keep up with the GPU's performance and how much memory speed it actually needs within the game, though obviously they have upped the memory speed and then we actually do get a little bit of a performance boost. But the main thing we've been concerned about is the amount of memory. And here, yes, it does only come with eight gigabytes, though when we are talking an RTX 5050, depending on the price, that likely isn't that bad of a deal, but when we're talking all the way back to GDDR6, that is at least a bit concerning. And next up, AMD just announced two brand new APUs. And one of these parts comes as something that I really think tells us a lot about the future of gaming and where companies like AMD see it going. As you can see here, we first have the Ryzen AI Z2 Extreme, then we have the Ryzen Z2A. And right off the bat, you'll notice, given the fact that these are the Z series processors, that these are specifically made for gaming handhelds. And you may have already heard of these, and that's because they were actually announced within the new Xbox handheld series. And you've probably heard tons of stuff about that, which is why I'm not really going to go over it here. But when we actually look at the APUs individually, things kind of tell us something, as well as an interview with AMD it really is pretty interesting. So first, let's kind of go over the more or less irrelevant one here. You can see it's the Ryzen Z2A. It comes with eight GPU cores and then four CPU cores with eight threads. Now, it does come with RDNA 2. That's not too surprising given the fact that it's right under the Z2 Go and that also comes with RDNA 2, but the CPU architecture actually goes all the way back to Zen 2. That definitely is a little bit surprising. Then it also supports memory speeds up to LP DDR5 6400 and comes with a configurable TDP of 6 to 20 watts. But of course, like I said, that isn't the interesting APU here. It's actually this one up here, the Ryzen AI Z2 Extreme. And right off the bat, you'll quickly notice that AMD is has not given up on their AI naming scheme. Personally, I really think it's way too on the nose, but alas, here we are. Now, when it comes to specs, you'll quickly notice that it is very similar to the regular Z2 Extreme. It comes with 16 GPU cores based on RDNA 3.5, comes with 8 CPU cores with 16 threads based on Zen 5, memory speed up to LPDDR5X8000, configurable TDP of 15 to 35 watts. Now, it's here where the similarities end. Judging by the name, you're likely not too surprised that it comes with 50 AI tops. And I can already kind of hear you saying, ugh, AI, we don't really care about this. Why in the world is this even in a gaming handheld anyway? And that's actually a very good question because with the Z2 Extreme, just the regular Z2 Extreme, they actually could have had an NPU in there as well, but they disabled it. So what in the world has changed since then? Well, it's actually during an interview that AMD answers this question. You can see right here, when asked, this is PC Gamer, it says, as for why exactly you'd want an NPU in a gaming handheld, AMD told us, quote, the addition of an MPU in the Ryzen Z2 Extreme brings low power on device AI capabilities to handheld gaming for the first time. While AI in handhelds is still emerging, developers are rapidly exploring uses like upscaling, adaptive gameplay, and smarter NPCs. Now, when they say smarter NPCs, I'm assuming that this is some of the stuff NVIDIA has been working on, like with their NVIDIA Ace. And let's be honest, adding things like AI to NPCs is definitely interesting. I mean, talk about making a game world feel alive. There's probably no better way. Basically, this means that AMD is now trying to get into this because they believe it's the future of gaming, as well as NVIDIA. But of course, let me know what you think down in the comments below. And lastly for today, NVIDIA has been getting smacked in the face by AMD with their 9070 series and now their 9060 XT. So the company obviously isn't going to be too happy about this. And with that, they're working to release a couple brand new GPUs. Of course, I recently went over one with the RTX 5080 Super, but we now have some new information on the upcoming 5070 Super, as well as a potential release. This story originally comes from 3D Center, where you can see that they go over the RTX 5070 Super. According to this, it is apparently set to come with the GB205, 
and it will either come with between 48 and 50 SMs, meaning it could have the exact same amount of cores as the regular 5070, or it could have a little bit more. Of course, the 5080 Super is said to have the exact same amount of cores as the regular 5080, but like I said, this one could have at least a little bit more. It's also said to still come on a 192-bit bus, but the really interesting part is the fact that we could be looking at 18 gigabytes of memory. Of course, everyone, including me, had been complaining about the lack of memory on these new GPUs. Specifically, we're talking 8 gigabytes, but right where around the 5070 is with 12 gigabytes can still be a problem, especially given how fast the 5070 can be, you are likely set to run into some of these issues. Maybe not in most games right now. I mean, definitely not in most games. There's probably maybe one or two that you could run into an issue with not having enough VRAM, but having enough performance. But it's really just future games that I'm worried about. Either way, now, one thing I do want to say is that the 5080 Super, uh, clearly this one is set to have not only more VRAM at 24 gigabytes, but it's almost certainly from what we've heard going to have quite a bit faster clocks. And because of that, that's why we're looking at over or equal to 400 watts. But with the 5070 Super, we don't have any kind of information on TDP, but I would definitely expect, especially if we're talking the same amount of SMs, it will almost certainly have much higher clocks and therefore it'll likely have a higher TDP, just like the 5080 Super. Just as of right now, we don't know exactly what that is. Now, lastly, we do have at least a little bit of information from this about when we can expect a release. According to this article, it is set for release either towards the end of this year or early next year. Basically, NVIDIA is working really hard to get these GPUs ready and out to better compete with AMD.